Oh, some of you guys, how are you doing today? Good. Good. That's great. Okay. So, I think we have a lot of presenters today. Are you guys ready? Okay, so first we have uh Zanab Janet. Wait, I don't think she's here. Oh wait, yeah, she is here. Yeah, yeah here. here. I think you have to make her co-host. I forgot to do that. Okay. Yeah, you can start whenever you want. Assalamu alaikum. I'm going to talk about Juma because today it's Juma. So um so so um so Juma is is um the word Juma means gathering and and on on Juma we we read Surah Al Kahf and and it means the word gathering. A special prayer called Juma is offered every Friday. Allah sub Subhanahu wa Taala created Adam Islam on the day of Juma. The day of judgment will be on on a Friday, so on a Juma day. On the day of Juma, there's an hour when all the was are accepted. Charity on the day of Juma is more re rewarding. So guys, don't re forget to read Surah al kahf today because when we read the, that um, Surah al kahf it brings a light on your face from one Friday until the other. So now I'm going to ask questions. And also the Prophet wasallam said, Allah has made this day of Juma an Eid for the Muslims. So let's make it a habit to do all the Sunnah of Juma and get more good deeds from this blessed day. So I'm going to ask a question. What does the word Juma mean? Yeah. Okay. What important day is on Juma? Friday. Friday. No, it's the day of judgment. Which prophet was born on Juma? Um, uh, prophet Adam. Yeah. Um. What surah do we read on the day of Juma? Surah Al yeah can you guys tell me why because um so that it can leave us prepared that there's you know there's like there's this this guy who's like named i think i forgot but he's bad and he's gonna come here and he might come here and the problem oh i i think i remember is the gel so he's bad and he's gonna and Prophet Muhammad has said some once that he's going to come, but nobody knows when he is going to come. And he is, but he is gonna come. So we read the Salah every single Friday for us to be prepared for, for him to come, and that he won't even come to your house if you say if every. 
Friday in your life, you are going to you say that um you read your little calf, he's not gonna come. Yeah. I learned a lot. And today's Friday too. It's Juma today. Yeah, I know. I went to Juma. Good for you. Okay, I'm done. Okay, amazing presentation set up. Uh, okay, so I don't think we asked what you guys learned because you guys just answered a bunch of questions. So I think next up we have. Uh, here, let me see. Oh, I think we have Zen next. Or the no, we have the Mia sisters next. Yeah. You guys can take it away. I should, I should learn no, wait, wait. Okay. 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 I should learn more like a here. Well, Welcome. Well, well, I S6 of Surah Al Waqia. Let's get started. Yay, butterfly fly. I will keep laughing in my seat on my jam. Bismillah, no, 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 him. Rabbi Shahli, Sadri, we are silly, Amri, Wahil, Okrat, and Melisani, Yakahu Koli. Allah, whom now Rabbana said in Alma. It has been so long, so let's do everything. Okay, so our first ayah, we talk about how the Day of Judgment is an inevitable event. Nothing, no one, not one person can delay this event. Not one person knows when it is, and not one person can stop it from happening. Nothing, nothing, nothing in the world can stop it from happening. Um, which also leads on to the second ayah. There, even the disbelievers, those who are so confident about it in this dunya that there's um, no that there's no God or that there's no day of judgment on that day, their soul they won't be able to deny it. What's happening around them, it'll be the undeniable truth. It'll be right in front of them, and this fact will, um, for the believers, it'll make them proud that they spent their lives preparing for this day, that they were ready for it. But for the non-believers, their head will be lowered. They'll be they'll be like disappointed in themselves that why didn't I realize this sooner? Why was I so stubborn? Like when um when you win something, when you spend so much time working for something, you stand with your head held high, right? But when you lose and you knew you should have prepared a little harder and you knew that it was going to be a little bit tougher and you lose, then your head is like you're lowered. You're looking down, you're staring at the ground and you're kind of sad. And then we learned about how the earth will be violently shaken. Like the earth, like the mountains will crumble turn, and um, the earth will shake so much. And then again, no one will be able to deny that. No one will be able to stop it. And um, we also learned about how the mountains will cru be crushed into powder. There will be little powder. So these mountains that to us right now, they look so big and amazing. Those mountains, they'll be nothing. It'll be flat or flat, nothing there anymore. SubhanAllah. Continuing on. Becoming scattered parts of dust.
Okay. All right. So this eye is kind of leading on to the last eye that I did of the mountains turning, basically like becoming or getting crushed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala follows up and said, with this ayah. And he says, فَكَانَتْ So they become haba, dust particles. And haba is like really, really fine dust particles that um, you don't really see just like by looking at it. Sometimes you can see it like floating in the air in like certain lights. But in reality, these are really, really small. So it's like, I don't know, you might need a microscope to see it. It's that small. And these dust particles, they won't be just like any dust particles. They'll be mumbatta. They'll be like dispersed and scattered everywhere. So like I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the mountains in this ayah. The same mountains that he's going to be, like that are basically going to be crushed. The ones that are like huge in this dunya that we look at and we're like in awe of. Those same mountains will turn into dust particles. Ones, um, and like like I said, not just like regular dust that we you know often have to clean, or sometimes the dust that we're allergic to, but these are the dust particles that are scattered, and they're scattered, they're mumbatha, so that there's not any signs of there even being mountains. So that's what uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala means when He says that these dust particles are scattered. When they uh, turn into dust. It'll be as if there weren't even any mountains there in the first place. And these same mountains that in this dunya, no human can demolish them or get rid of them. If someone were to go up to a mountain right now and be like, I'll destroy it, you'll kind of laugh at them because you're like, a small human cannot do anything as compared to a big mountain like that. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he just has to say one word and that will happen. And in this case, he'll say one word and the mountains will be gone they'll be demolished and like kind of blown off their bases. So the earth will basically be broken down um, and it'll start off with the crumbling of the mountains like we discussed in these ayahs. And then it will leave the earth, like Ikra said, like all leveled and flat, like a barren ground. Um, and another interpretation, basically like um, these mountains will become like dust. And on the day of judgment, when the wind blows and um, like the mountains will scatter, that is how, like to show like how powerful the day of judgment will be. And in this dunya, whoever is like into science might know this, but in this dunya, we know like there's certain types of heat and some, there's one type of super intense heat that turns rocks into lava. So like basically the lava that you see in volcanoes, there's a certain type of heat that turns those like these rocks, the mountainous rocks, into really, really hot lava. And we know lava is super hot, we can't touch it. But I know they're like in this dunya, there's no heat that we can think of that will turn um, rocks into gas basically, or turn rocks into a type of dust that will disappear. But subhanAllah, that's the power of the day of judgment, that these same mountains, these rocks, they'll be turned into dust particles. They'll be basically non-existent anymore. SubhanAllah, that's all I have to say. SubhanAllah, wow, that's crazy, Michelle. So um, as Sister Michelle was telling us, everything, including what seems indestructible to us. So um, um, everything that seems indestructible to us will be dust. It'll be nothing. Like as Michelle, Michelle was saying, the mountains, you would think that these like strong, sturdy mountains, like, right? So many people can climb up them and they look so huge to us. To our eye, they look huge. But to Allah, those are nothing. They'll be dust. And Allah will say be and it is and they'll be gone. Like Michelle said, barren ground. It'll be flat. It'll be scattered. They'll be gone. And then um, as and then we learn how powerful the day of judgment is. Something that what we think, what our science thinks can't be um, turned into dust will be scattered and turned into dust. It will be as if it was never there in the first place. No one on this earth can do anything even relatively similar to that. No one on this earth can even have the imagination of the science behind that, subhanAllah. And again, the disbelievers will be humbled by this. Like they can refuse to believe right now, but when they see this dust, the scattered dust, how will they feel? Their heads will be lowered again. So it's a good reminder that this world 
will be dust. It'll be scattered. Everything will be scattered. So what's the point on wasting our forever days on something that will turn into absolutely nothing soon enough? It's not going to kill. Aisha, did you forget to ask something? Oh, uh, oops. Wait. Why did it long, why did it long today? Anyone? I learned about um, the mountains will be dust. Right. Good job. Yes, Sarah. I just know I have anything to ask, but I really like the presentation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Exactly, hi Sara. Yes, it was a very great presentation. <clears throat> Thank you, Mia sisters, for sharing. Okay, so I ha I think God you saved chocolate can me out. Okay, you can say it now, Aisha. The chocolate can me out. Okay, that was a great presentation. And now we have uh, Zane presenting. So you can present wherever you want. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Today I'm going to be telling a story about Prophet Adam, alayhi salam. Prophet Adam was the first man to be ever created by Allah. Allah showed him around. There was a lot of animals in Jannah. A lot of stuff. And Allah told him he can eat anything he wants except from that tree. Until Shaitan told them to to eat from it. It gives you good health. No, it gives you good luck. They ate it and then Allah got so angry, they got scared and then Allah sh took them out of Jannah and, and, and they went to earth. So then they had to learn how to survive. They walked for a long time and then they they you know where they were so then they had to find stuff to to help them they they had to live here for a long time they had to they uh, prophet adam had to had to um prophet adam had to f build a house for everyone and her wife and then after he built the house. A few years later, ba they got babies. They, and then, here's when the sad thing comes. So when the, the um, boys and girls were, were grown up, they were going to marry each other. And then, and then when they got married, one of them got so angry that they, Met, they did it, and then, and then he decided, and that brother decided to kill him. It was, it was so scary then. And then he did. And then Allah took the one who was killed to Jannah, and and when the other one who was still alive dies he will go to hellfire then they had more kids until prophet adam was old it was really hard the kids were already grown up 
they were doing the crops. And then a few years later, Prophet Adam died and went back to Jenna and 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 had a great life in Jenna again, and also on Earth. So, can you share um what you learned today? That you sh that it's never okay to if it's never okay to kill someone or else that will lead you to help fire hellfire. That's a good answer. Any Thank you, Zane. You're welcome. Any any more answers? Okay, that was that was a great story, Zane. Okay, so now we next up we have uh. Can I leave? What? Can I leave? Uh, I think you have to listen to everyone else's presentations also. Uh, okay. So next up we have um Nana presenting, so you can start. Um, I I have to share my screen. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Hello. I hope everyone's doing great. So today we'll be talking about the last 10 days of Ramadan. So Ramadan is one of the most important months to Muslims, right? It is a, it is a time of increased worship, spiritual cleansing, good deeds, and acts of charity. In light of Allah's love and mercy towards us, the reward for every good deed in Ramadan is multiplied by 70. Isn't that great? And the last 10 days of Ramadan are of great importance. Make sure you do as many good deeds and make as many duas as you can. So prayer. Prayers. Pray all your salahs on time. Make sure, make it your habit to not miss any prayer. And then learn a new surah before going to bed. Start with the shortest surahs first, and then, um, like, you know, Surah Ikhlas, Surah Na, Surah Falak, start with the shortest surahs, learn them, every, like, you know, at least make it um, every week, learn a new surah. Yeah, Baba. And then listen and re or recite the e morning and evening, evening askar. While you're doing any work or driving, or you can listen to the askar and earn good deeds. Then we have duas. Make a dua list. Ask Allah for everything you want to. Take advantage of this month and pray for everything your heart desires. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Make dua for your parents, grandparents, loved ones. Then we have charity. Give charity. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, the believers shared on the day of resurrection will be their charity. You know, when you get pocket money from your parents, take a small amount and keep it in a charity box. It, it'll, um, and then when it's full, make sure you give it to the needy and the deserved ones, okay? So what do you guys learn by this small presentation? I learned that the last 10 days are of great importance. Yeah. Make sure you um you take a word about a scar. I learned yes. that the last 30 days are the most baraka days. And if you fight them, I mean last 10 days, and if you fight them, you get one thousand months six one thousand months before. 
Yes, thank you, Sarah, and everyone else who shared their learning. Um, that's it from my side. Okay, great presentation. Uh, next up, uh, we have Sultan, if he's here. Are you here? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I'm going to share um about a masjid. And then I have a and then I have a Lego masjid. So first I'll share the Lego masjid. So these are the pillars. And then if you look inside, there's three prayer mats. And this is the place where the Imam stands. And then so um the significance of a masjid is that the masjid is Allah's home. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that the reward of praying in a masjid is better than 1,000 prayers. You can get more closer to Allah by praying in a masjid. Another name for, uh, for masjid is mosque. The, the Kuba Masjid is the first and oldest masjid built. The largest masjid, masjid in the world is Masjid al Haram. Where a Kaaba is, its capacity is 4 million people, and it's in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. And today, Kaaba is in the center of the world, and all Muslims face Kaaba to pray. Before Kaaba was built, Muslims used to face Masjid al-Aqsa to pray. And that's it. That's really cool. Uh, did you is build it that yourself? Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Also, what did you learn? You guys got to share at least one thing. I learned about um, Mr. Haram was the oldest, <clears throat> was the oldest, the, the oldest mosque. That's the largest mosque. Hey, I was going to say that too. The oldest mosque is Masjid Al Kuba. Good job. Okay. Great. Okay, so, Sar, do you have a question? No. Do you have anything you want to share? Because your hand was raised. Oh, I really like the Lego Buster. That's really nice. Thank you. Okay, I think that's enough for today's class. Yeah, I think that's everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum. Electric shock. <laughs>